great question. Um, our, our contention is that it, it does help. It provides a taxonomy that we think independent scientists who don't have a dog in the fight can say, here's where we are with the science, and this is all that we are with the science. And so policymakers just understand that you're making a decision about his money um, when, you, when you make this decision. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad that you brought us back to the courtroom because my introduction was all about Dalbert and Fry and how the federal courts and about half of the state court systems are using Dalbert standards to say, I'm going to, before the trial, I'm going to listen to your claims uh, about the science, and it's going to be relevant, and it's going to be reliable, right? Period. Or, or you don't testify. Um, that is increasing. The number of states taking on Dalbert is increasing. And I ask you the question, should the legislative and executive departments also have Dalbert standards? If we pass a law, should it pass? And I gave you the example. The state of Indiana made pi you know, by legislative decree, statute, 3.0, 3. They can do that. That's, a, that's the will of the people. That's the legislative body. They can make any law they want to. And they've made laws saying um, it's, it's illegal not only to abuse a child, but to shake a baby and, and create a subdural hematoma. They can make that law. It could be more or less informed by the science that's underneath. Uh, our contention is we're making a little bit of progress in at least, you know, outlining a taxonomy that would allow independent scientists to say, here's where a science is. In nutrition, I, I beg you to go look into the science of nutrition. You're going to be shocked. Look at America. I mean, we're the so-called one of the most educated countries in the world. Um, and look at, look at our health due to nutrition. It's, it's, it's bad. I saw a hand over here. Yes, sir. I was going to say something about uh, Daubert. Uh, in addition to the relevancy issue, and, uh, but the Daubert actually I think ask the judges to look behind the claim of an expert. He says it comes in. The expert comes in and says, "Well, you must. This, this is the facts, and I because I say so. I'm the expert." Mm -hmm. They ask him to look at. First of all, is is the theory hypothesis, hypothesis testable? Has it been so tested? Is it peer reviewed? Mm -hmm. um, what is the error rate? Mm -hmm. Are there standards for conducting this test that have been agreed upon? And then is there a general acceptability? They didn't quite junk fry. But the idea is it actually says, it actually says look behind what the expert is claiming and ask what the basis for his claim is. And then that's where your taxonomy plays a role. You have competing experts. Well, maybe, maybe expert one is relying on category three uh, you know, material, and the other one's relying on category one. 
Right. And then you say, well, we'll go with category one. Yes, sir, you're exactly right. So if you decompose the re reliability requirement, the two R's, re relevance and reliability, you get exactly what you're saying over the uh, case law has, has devolved to exactly what you just said, the error rate, et cetera, et cetera. And that, again, that's what we think this might help with is, is bending in, in that, that systematic way. Yes, sir. Um, most of my career has been with EPA regulations. And the way best available science has actually been used in that context is I, I haven't run into anybody in the agency who refused to use good science that was there. Sure, sure. And what has actually happened is that this phrase was often used by proponents of one side or the other mm -hmm. to limit information being used. Mm -hmm. And so that as the analyst, you had some information, it hadn't yet appeared in a journal, or uh, you had collected it ad hoc for a particular short-term study to try and understand something about the effect of the regulation or something like that, and people who didn't like the answer that that produced would attack it on the basis of best available science. So I found <laughs> in my personal interaction with, with regulatory agency for 30 years is that the best available science has been a way to exclude information, mm -hmm. not generate good information. Mm -hmm. Emphasis again on available. It's got to be objective, open. Don't listen to me. It, our view is don't listen to us. You go produce your, I will help you generate the right answers. I mean the right questions. You go figure out what, what the answers are. All right? that's, that's our approach here. Yeah. I just saw another hand. Let's make this one the last question. Okay. Last question. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, there's something called the curse of multidimensionality that goes on here. And um, uh, the situation uh, applies to everything you've talked about, that uh, taking it, for example, in climate change, you're talking about very nonlinear mm -hmm. partial differential mm -hmm. equations. Mm -hmm. And if you have a quadratic equation, mm -hmm. uh, you've got two solutions. Um, if you have uh, the climate uh, change situation, uh, Navier-Stokes, you have an infinite number of solutions. Mm -hmm. And so everybody's right. Uh, but uh, the different uh, the probabilities of outcomes, uh, considering where you are, is, uh, is there. Uh, and uh, we end up with a situation uh, with Mr. Pedantic, uh, and I forgot your name, uh, said that uh, F equal MA uh, it, it requires an assumption that the laws of physics are valid over the entire universe, or all possible universes. And uh, so every one of these things has uh, multiple interpretations, including F equal MA and the speed of light. Mm -hmm. It may not be the same in a black hole. It may not be the same in another parallel universe. Mm -hmm. uh, so the situation uh, we uh, we got a situation, you said openness is important. Uh, in, in my opinion, uh, knowing a little bit about Navier-Stokes, uh, I, I, I tend to say uh, to err on the side of global warming is indeed a hoax, is indeed a hoax. And the openness of the letters which have been uh, discarded, uh, of the letters that just came out, which have been impeached and said, we ought to put those guys in jail who hacked into that server rather than put the guys who, uh, uh, who said, uh, I want to perpetuate the global warming hoax so I can get funding next year in jail. Well, if I can comment on that, you're, I, I, I'm very attracted to what you said. Let's bear in mind now, although we hear the Europeans hate us, everything we do, they do. So we have a Freedom of Information Act. The Brits have a, now have a Freedom of Information Act. That act was invoked, and those emails were, and the databases and the emails were legally required to be provided in an open context. They were not. And uh, they've right. been destroyed, so should we put those people in jail? Or should we say you've got to go back to ground zero and say uh, don't put in a, uh, uh, a uh, confiscatory tax on energy that is going to... Uh, help our economy go back into redistribution or unemployment. I rest my case. <laughs>